Yeah, so he's going to play. Alan Quillen just walked in and said, you're the devil. You are the devil, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How did that happen? Because you uh, started this conversation last week about Gerbrandt Grobler. Um, I, I was away, obviously, so people yeah, are probably... <laughs> people, yeah, it's ironic I was away when this came out. Um, obviously, people are looking for my opinion, and, and, and people have been sending me messages and texting me and tweeting me and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's a, a very difficult one, first of all, to get kind of get your head around that monster signed the guy in the first place. And genuinely, that was my thought straight away. Um, why did they sign him? Uh, I think it was a mistake to sign him because, not because of the playing ability uh, and the character and the type of guy or whatever he is. Um, I think they made a mistake because this was inevitably going to come up at some stage. Now, part of me thinks it should have come up in July. Okay, the lines was on. Uh, there was distraction from the rugby journalists. Can I just ask you about that, right? Shouldn't Munster have brought it up in the first point? Because I went back and looked at the press release. Probably. And it's like... What uh, would you do, though, if you were Munster well, in so that they, situation? They, they sent it would out... Would you have been kind of... Um, would you be... Would you had that... Would you have made that decision at the time, or would you kind of hoped in some ways... I think they hoped in some ways it would go under the radar. 100%. Yeah. They, yeah. they press released it on the Friday, I think, of the second test or the third test in the middle of the lines. Um, look at it, the middle of the, the... Before the third test, I but think. But to be fair, Ger... Uh, we will get onto it in a little bit more in a second. There was nobody available. They'd lost Dave Foley, Dunica Ryan, John Madigan, uh, Darren O'Shea had an injury. As they say in their statement, Tyburn was was signed, and Tyburn was signed maybe two or three months before. So they knew Tyburn was coming 14, 15 months yeah. before. Uh, you and know, I'd say they hoped they'd get Tyburn released. And, and to be honest, I'd be trying to keep up on all the players throughout the world who's available, who's not, who's out of contract. and. You know, when I was a player, I was always saying, try and sign this guy, I heard he's out of contract next year. And you'd hear little whispers of guys keen and moving, South Africans, Australians. Um, so there's been a lot of talk about, oh God, this guy stopped the development of, of a monster player. But that's rubbish. There was no one available. Uh, the next person probably in line of a young player, now I'll have to clarify that, Finneen Witcherly, outstanding young player, who's, he's not European standard yet. He's an outstanding player, really good player, but, the counter argument is they've done all right without him. Just give him the yeah, but if yeah, of Stop course it. they've done all right without him. And then there's another argument: win at all costs, and who cares, and all that stuff. But if Munster are not qualifying for quarterfinals, they haven't. They're not get, making money. They're not keeping the brand up. They're not being able to reinvest. Um, they play two two back rows against Cast in round one in Europe, and a lot of their problems um, in the first part of the season were lack of second rows. Um, Jean Klein was injured. Um, they had to sign Mark Flanagan from Saracen, so they had problems there. And I know myself as a back row, if you haven't two good se second rows, like I was blessed, O'Connell, yeah. O'Callaghan, uh, Mick O'Driscoll, these guys, Dunnick Ryan, four internationals. So that was an area that was of, a, of an issue. So if you're sitting down trying to fill those areas, you've got to look outside. There was no one readily available. So the fact that he's blocking someone else's pathway um, is not right. The moral side of this is this guy knowingly uh, took steroids in 2004 as a 21-year-old, as an adult, not a child. Exactly. Very young now, in fairness, very young. The temptation is there, and, and I put myself in the position, and I heard Dar speaking about it, Woody, Donald Lenahan, I, I was trying to follow all this stuff um, as ex-players. And, and any athlete who's in that situation, you want to try and make it, play international rugby, there's money in it, there's financial rewards, so there's temptations there. Um, this guy obviously, you know, he says he was injured. I don't know Gerbrandt Grobler. I, I kind of walked past him a few times down in Limerick, um, didn't speak to him. Um, I suppose he, he made a bad decision to, to go down that road. The moral side of it is, um, two years is what you get for a, for a doping ban. Um, the policy in the IRFU uh, is zero tolerance on, on, on doping in, in rugby. Allegedly. And in, in, in our country, in the it country. Isn't really yeah, it's not a written rule again. So morally... They just bent that rule, like the first, the first time they needed somebody, they just bent the rule and said, we don't care about that rule actually. Somebody along the way went, ah, that's all bollocks. But is zero tolerance, what does zero tolerance in rugby mean? Does it mean... Don't sign a doper. Does it mean that though? I, that's how I would pick up zero Should, tolerance. Shouldn't it mean that? 
It probably should, yeah, it should. And, and they um, should know that, like, because it's their, it's their policy. So they come out and they beat the drum about how great they are about like a clean sport and we're mad into it and we've got this investment. There's, there's an individual officer in each of the provinces, you know, or spirit officers or whatever they were called. And it's like, it's nonsense. If you're, yeah. it, so just to go back to the story, right, because it's, it's interesting that like the media are the ones who are being attacked for saying, my concern here is that rugby ends up like cycling or like athletics. And we love rugby. It means something. Munster means something. It's a powerful thing. And it means my whole life. I played 15 years there. And I always think um, if you're a player in any position in Munster or Leinster or any of the provinces and if an overseas player is signed, is he going to come to my position? Is he going to be like when Jim Williams was signed for Munster? What was my first reaction? Where does that leave me? Yeah. Some Australian guy is coming in. He's going to take my place. It's difficult. Um, and that's what you get get your head around. But then suddenly, if we, we don't have that situation now where Gerbrand Grobler's come in and taken an Irish guy's place. No, so we have so to be realistic here. No, that, that's fine. But um, I actually think that. But morally, the story of taking drugs, coming back, and one of the provinces signing it, it would have been much better if we kept this squeaky clean that here we are, we have this zero tolerance, but we're not going to sign someone. We're sorry. We wish him well. We, you know, let us, some other club sign him. The mitigating factors are there was nobody else there. But. I think, in hindsight, if this situation happened again, if somebody presented themselves, there's not a chance we'll sign another person in this situation. Part of me does feel sorry for the player because he's kind of thrown under the bus around this. This is down to, uh, you know, the decision makers. So the player served the ban. Um, any athlete who, you know, we can all have an opinion on it, but the rules are there. It's a two-year ban. Yeah. So you don't think, do you think someone should come back after any sort of doping in any sport? I think that you, you have to stand for something. That The rugby culture in Ireland has to stand for something. Okay, and so aside from that, do you think any any athlete in any sport, whether it be athletics, cycling, rugby, soccer, I don't think if they dope, is enough. Do you th okay. So they got to change that then. So we can't. But I think that we need to be leaders in that, and as opposed to going. Yeah, no, you, you're, so, you, you may be right. You know, it's like that. these are the rules, and we're going to bend them as far as we possibly can. Is one attitude, or it's like we stand for something, and what we stand for is we want to win clean. And you know what? If, if other countries are going to cheat us constantly, we're going to call them out on that, and we're going to expose that, and we're going to say that's not that's not acceptable. Yeah. But like. So we've tainted that situation. No. I, I think, yeah, we have. I think there's a possibility that this taints everything that's gone in the past. And that taints everything that goes in the future. That like, we, we you you were supposed to stand for something. That Munster jersey meant something for years and decades. Like all the way back, it means something. But I think that whoever made this call blew that up and went. Actually, that's all. That's, that's just marketing. The truth is, we need to win, and we need to win. No, we got I this don't. Guy. I don't think it went down to. Oh, look, we'll try and make. Everybody sat in a room and said, "Say nothing. We'll slip this under the radar." I think it looks like that. Yeah. It, it, it didn't. That didn't happen, Ger. I think what happened here was uh, an error of judgment, and Rassi signed him. Um, and I think with Saiso from the IRFU and Rassi. Yeah, they have. sign off on the overseas players. They do. Um, that would suggest Rassi that. signed him, and I'm sure he pushed hard to get him because there was nobody else. Because he's a good player. Um, I'm sure he's great. So it's Rassi, Ra uh, and Rassi is gone. And I feel sorry for Van Gran. I feel sorry for Van Gran. I feel sorry for Conor Murray. Stuff, I feel yeah. sorry for Peter Manning. They're, they're, they're the guys who have to be rolled out. and, um, and They're the ones who all think that we're out to get them, but we're not. We're like we're actually trying to protect the Munster. Yeah, I, and understand, Irish, I understand that now that I'm on the outside. I do understand it. Um, should the guy be play for Munster, be allowed to play for Munster? I think so now. Because I don't think you can go and say, well, hold on a minute, we've made a mistake, rip up the guy's contract and don't play him. I think it's too late. I think the decision that was made uh, to sign the player was wrong. He shouldn't have been signed. And what they should they, have said, look, there's a problem here. This guy, we, we, it's going to... What if they win a European Cup and he's on the field at the end? Does that not taint that victory forever? Uh, it's a good question. <laughs> uh, I don't think um, it does because this is not going to go away. Unfortunately, if he comes on on Sunday, um, I think the fans and the supporters and the diehards in Munster will support him. It's interesting the rugby players Ireland have come out and supported him as well. And, and I think they have no choice. The players' agency, a players' union. They, they, has they to have a choice. They have a choice, Jar, because w you, as a player, you you make a you si you sign up at the start of the year and you make a. It's a small nominal fee to be a member, mm. um, and they are there to support. So you can kind of just go, well, 
we'll throw the players under the bus if they have a drink problem or if they do something off the field. They're there to support them on off on field and off field stuff. So they've got to stick with the guy yeah. and, and give him some support. Um, any chance of redemption? You see, this is this is part there is, of there me. Is, there is there is definitely a chance of redemption. Who gave you the drugs? How much did they cost? How many of your teammates were using them? Uh, how did you administer them? What other drugs were available for you? And like chapter and verse detail. And, Here's and maybe my diary come out and educate people on like, on. There's a hundred percent chance yeah, of redemption. Yeah. Like absolutely, there is a chance for redemption. We put and the if interview he did that, do you think week. then it'd be okay I'd, for him to absolutely. play then for Munster? Absolutely. I, I think I think that, that there's like away? a. I think that you've got to, if he decides that he's going to dedicate part of his life to being a solution to this problem and becomes a proper cautionary tale, because we're being told, oh, he's now a deterrent for the young lads in, in Munster and Irish rugby, but he's not. He's like, go off for he's two years. He's got to speak out about it now, you say. And become a leader on it. But can like, Munster become a leading area in this? Like, if we take what you say as true, that they actually didn't just put that much thought into it and they signed him without really looking into his background or kind of brushing it off, that suggests to me that Munster aren't in a position to be the leading voice in anti-doping. They said they got character references and, and talked to a bunch of people. There were pretty brief that. answers in that, in that question and answer. It was like, did he, did he cross-reference? The answer was yes. That was, that was one of the answers to, that, to our list of questions yesterday. So that there's, not, there's not a whole pile of detail there. Just on the premise that, like, we, we don't know, but if, if it had just kind of slipped through the cracks a little bit, let, let's say that that's true, that just strikes me as an organisation that don't have anti-doping high up their priority list and might not now be in a position to lead the anti-doping. Well, to be fair, I think, uh, I think there's just... There's a blip and a mistake made here. When I played with Munster, we, we were regularly informed about the do's and don'ts, the medications, our doctors were top class. Um, even around supplements and around, I remember it was probably 2004 or five, uh, we, were, we, we wanted to take supplements because every, all the other professional sides were. Um, and I remember we had Dr. Liam Hennessy was in with us one time and uh, he was encouraging us to take, eat more nuts, seeds, fruit, and <laughs> Trevor Hogan at the time. Uh, Trevor was trying to get a bit bigger because he was trying to get it in the mix with O'Connell, O'Callaghan, O'Driscoll. Um, he and Trevor ended up going to Leinster after that. But he could not believe that that's where we were getting nuts and seeds and we were expected to win in Europe. Um, now, obviously supplements have been introduced to all the provinces in, in a very measured and tailored way. Um, with, with our nutritionists and all that stuff. Um, so we continuously got loads of information. To be fair on, week after week, any sort of changes in the regulations, any substances added to the ban list, medications, Lemsips, Sudafets, we continuously got that. So I think the information and um, that was given to, and is still given and it, uh, to all the players, professional players in Ireland. So the policy, I, I, so I, t I, I do feel a little bit that Munster just caught, got, got blindsided here, made a bad error of judgment out of panic that they needed someone. And the person who made that decision and drove that situation was Rassi Erasmus, um, who was doing, and you, you think of the year they're after coming off uh, with, with, with Axel, with the, the and terrible, uh, the adversity they've had and the job Rassi had done to bring him so far. So he'd, his standing had gone up to here. So he'd become a real kind of important, powerful decision maker. Somebody, some, there's a check, checks and balances along the way. The chief executive goes, I'm giving this contract to this guy. He's a drugs cheat. Not really good for the brand. Sponsors aren't going to like this. That's the problem, Ger. That's the problem. The conversation wasn't had. He's a drug street in a room with people to say, and then we hold on a minute. They now say we they make did a talk decision. about it. They said that they were aware of it. They were aware the of it. They were like, aware of it. I was aware of it when they signed him. I, I watched him for Rassing. I oh, I covered a game for Sky, two games for Sky last year. I knew this guy was had 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 tested positive for yeah. for steroids. So I, I knew that. So and the other just a, the last couple of points on this. Um, the whole point is that steroids train your body in a way that you can then get the benefit from them even when you're not taking them. So. Like, that's why I think there'll be an asterisk beside whatever he achieves in the rest of his career. It's like, that guy dope, took steroids, and anabolic steroids help you get big muscles. You can then activate those muscles with certain training patterns. You don't need to continue taking them to get the benefits from them. That's a bad thing, and I think that's not fully understood by well, people. Uh, yeah, it's not understood by me that if you take steroids that you can... You get benefits for the, um, like, up to a decade afterwards. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not 100% sure on that, but obviously if you... That's what the latest you, science is. If you get bigger and stronger, that maybe you can maintain that strength. You lose some of it because yeah. it's, a, it's a quick surge of... 
of strength and power, but obviously you, you build a foundation. So like clearly, you know, he was obviously really good because even after two years out, he's like now played with two of the best teams in Europe, with Racing and Munster. Yeah, and so there's, the, there's the worries about his career. Do you know, that's hard to buy. That's a sob story that, that you tell. He's, he's, he's signed a heads of agreement with Gloucester for, for a three-year contract. Um, but you wonder why Rassing would let him go as well, like, so... It was part of the Dunica deal, is it? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Just know. It's anyway. a hard one to take when you see Dunica Ryan playing for Rassing at the weekend and like, all this seriously? stuff coming out. Yeah, you know, it is. Yeah, it's very frustrating. Problems, like, I, I just couldn't get in my head around watching Dunica Ryan in the Rassing jersey playing against the red forward, jersey. Like yeah. five minutes left to yeah. go, looking yeah. fit as a whippet. But look, um, I think the players should be allowed to play. At the end of the season, if they cut him loose, fine. But I think at this stage now, um, the conversation has been had, and credit to yourself, and credit to the other journalists. But, but I like. Um, I don't think there's. I genuinely don't think there's a, a witch. I don't think there's a witch hunt here to enhance people. I think it's it's it was a very very important topic that was brought up. Now I think there's mitigating factors in in what happened and them signing him. They shouldn't. He shouldn't have been signed. There, maybe for Munster there are, but there's none for the IRFU. No, I think they should have blocked it. Um, but look, it's a mistake. I think the conversation has been had. I don't think it's going to happen again. So just to finish on this point, yeah. I, th I don't think he should have been signed, but I think he should be allowed to play now. It's too late just to rip up the guy's contract. Um, but I would love to hear him come out, and, and maybe that will be something that Munster will allow, um, to have a conversation with yourself or somebody in the media to bring this out in the open, to have a proper conversation to say, look, this is what I feel about it now, this is what I was thinking at the time, and this is what I want to happen for the future, that I, I want to be part of, of change or, or stopping this situation. It definitely raises questions about uh, doping in South Africa generally. Like, there well, We always heard that, Ger, as we were players. I went down to the tour in, uh, and I know a group of the lads, I was on the extended squad in 98, and we had heard stuff you know, we'd seen, and there was evidence, there's evidence to say some of the international players, top players in South Africa have been, have, have had serious drug bans, that there is possibly a culture there, there is evidence that in the, some of the school systems that there was... Uh, Massive amounts uh, of kids in schools are taking them. Taking it. And they're taking um, them to look... And there were surveys done about that in yeah. South Africa, and guys spoke out um, uh, about that, young players, but there's, in 2003 we went down there, 2004 we went down there, and again, you're hearing these rumours, and you're looking at some of these guys, and you're thinking, um, you know, they can do it all right. in secret, though, can't they? Right. And have the long-term benefits, as Jarrah says, and I suppose do it away in in, in their own and, and, remote and people, locations. People have questioned: um, Is there a drugs problem in Irish rugby? All I can say again, and some people laugh at this, I haven't seen it. And I think, in fairness to the IRFU, they've tainted the situation now. But I think the testing. Um, I've I've often been tested when I was play, playing outside a road out and off. Off season, if you like, I remember being in a hotel in Cork and down in Inchidani one summer, getting tested there. Nice. Giving your, giving your dates when you go on your holidays, and um, they call into your house, stuff like that. Yeah. So it did ramp up as the years went on. In the earlier days, we it was after matches, but then we were fair game all year round. Um, so I think the IRFU. This thing has tainted the situation a bit. It's been a mistake, um, but I think the players should be allowed to play now. We're um, we're doing the Munster Cast game live on the radio on um, Sunday. Will Dave and Keith Wood have um, rotten tomatoes thrown at them in the commentary box in Thomond? No, I think people understand. I think even the diehards in Munster understand that this is uh, this this situation could have been avoided, but. Are you telling me if he goes out onto the field and, and gets a bonus point try at the weekend that people will jeer him or boo him off? No, they won't. I do believe in redemption in any part of life. I and, do, but and, you have to ask for it properly. Like, you yeah. know, like but to be fair to the guy, he's still, he, he, I think there is a situation now where he probably has to come out and speak about it and, and hopefully that will happen. It would be great if Rassi was still here because he could go through the nits and... and yeah. The nuts and bolts of it. Why don't you try and get him on the phone or chase him down and see what he's speaking about? Not a bad shout. We've, we've literally asked everybody else to talk to us, so we, we may as no, well. I think Rassi, and, and to be fair, he's an honest guy. He's a straight guy from what I got to know of him, and I think he would probably tell you his views. and, and The reason this all kicked off from our perspective was that I, was, I said this before, we, we were doing a road show and it was in Munster, and there was a bunch of Munster players at it. And afterwards, the topic of Chili Boy Ralapelli came up, and one of your former teammates went, that guy's a cheat. And he was really animated about it. Like, really, like, that, you were going out playing against that guy, and he has taken drugs. Like, he was absolutely livid about it. 
And I remembered him saying that and thought, that's now your team. That still, it's always going to be your team and your club that has somebody who's been injected into the mix who you have to say the same thing about. Yeah. He's, it, you know, I was just looking up what Chili Boy took. It was uh, methylhexanamine. Um, it's a steroid as well. Hexanamine. That is... Is that with Toulouse? He or was in South Africa or was it, I think he it was... He plays for Toulouse, but I think... He played for Toulouse. He's gone now. He's gone yeah. back to South Africa. Yeah, I think he might have been um, somewhere else. Yeah, it was in South Africa. That was while he was recovering he from injury, so, you know, a bit about... That's a con that, that could very much be got from a contaminated protein source that's uh, uh, an excuse that's often... Excuse. Yeah, that's an, uh, an excuse but often... How finish. often do we hear sports people admit to it? You remember Marion Jones, the unbelievable oh, yeah. sprinter? Yeah, yeah. So she won five medals in Sydney. Yeah. Seven years. And the only reason she admitted to it is because she was going to jail. Yeah. Uh, how long did it take Ben Johnson to admit it? Quite a while. A long time as well. So we've seen. So we have to give some credit if they hold the hands up. And, and I, I was kind of Googling this morning. You look at Martin uh, um, Martin Fagan, the retired marathon runner in Ireland yeah, yeah. from Mullingar. Yeah. Um, you know, he came out and admitted as well and spoke about it. And tried to get back into athletics and Irish athletics then gave it up. He got back after two years. Yeah. He, there was a lot of pressure there and did shun him. So, um, and then he just, he gave, he gave it up. He stopped then, he retired, so um, if they're caught and they admit it, there is to be a little bit of credit, a little bit of credit for that. I think it's, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe Because most like of them just deny it, but like, you but like you say, we then want to hear the story as to Chapter how, inverse. the why, yeah. and what should and shouldn't be, and what the benefits were. Yeah, give us name names. What was going through your head, and say, like, where did you get it, and, yeah. and, and try and, yeah, that, that in turn then gives you a chance to go after where this, where this was sourced. Was this a, a program that was running? Was this a doctor that administrated? Did you buy it in the local gym? Now, come on, that's exactly the question you know, that needs to be being asked here. As opposed because to we know it's we've, grandy service we've all heard him. all our lives about the bodybuilders and the gyms, yeah. and you know sometimes these guys openly admit. Yeah. I've met bodybuilders who've, you know, oh, I mean, totally, yeah, it's, no a, problem, it's a massive it's, culture in, in Irish gyms as well. Where so. does it come from? Yeah, um, the games themselves. Finally, get to talk about some rugby this week. <laughs> you kind of have forgotten that there's a uh, massive amounts of games of significant importance. Um, the Munster cast game, there's the Irish matches highlighted there in the Champions Cup. Uh, Leinster at Montpellier, Munster on Sunday at home to cast and Ulster away at Wasps. Um, are Leinster going to win this game? Um, it's going to be tricky. Um, Montpellier are effectively gone, uh, but I still think they'll be very, very tough at home. Um, I think Leinster can go there and win, yeah, definitely. It's going to be a tricky one for them. Um, they've stuttered a little bit in France. You think of the cast last year when they went and got the draw. Yeah. Cost themselves probably getting top of the pool, uh, top of the whole seedings. Um, I think they can and probably will go in there and win. And do they, like, because they're qualified and because they have a home quarter final, do they care that much about finishing? Like, does, it, do, he, Leo Cullen will want them to go and, and continue that, that that momentum and that that feel good factor they've been outstanding and they've sent out a real message that um, they're major contenders and if you think Saracens and Toulon the kind of big hitters when we get to knockout stages might may not be there and then you're trying to pick teams and, and look at who who will be there yeah um, last week when he named the team and picked Larmer um, we had Dave and Brian Driscoll in and they were both saying, oh, Larmer's getting picked here ahead of Rob Kearney. Dave was like, there's not a chance Rob Kearney doesn't start the game uh, in Montpellier. He's definitely going to pick him for that away match. Like, that would have been in, in Cullen's head. Like, you're you're picking not one team, but two teams in advance. But now they're already through. It's like, that, that game last week when they got the bonus point and guaranteed, maybe that was actually a bigger game than this one. And maybe... So who's first choice? Um, I think Rob Kearney is still first choice when it comes down to the... Um, you know, the real intense, competitive, aggressive, physical games. Um, this guy's only played for start mid his debut four months ago. So I think he has to be managed a little bit. Yeah. Um, held back a small bit. Now, he could be unique where you can just unleash him and he can just go from strength to strength to strength. I was interesting reading, uh, listening to Ger Gervin Dempsey about how much effort and work and enthusiasm he has, mm. um, the amount of video work, um, the extra training he does. Um, is fantastic to hear because that's what you want a young player you think um, when they're doing that so young um, but the, he's obviously learning off people around him that this is the required kind of level that you, you're not taking it for granted you still got to work hard and analyse 
Um, so he has to be watched. So I think Rob Carney is probably, and, and it's probably it's going to come down to Joe Schmidt in Paris. Will he start Larmer at fullback? Will he start Andrew Conway? Will he start Rob Carney? I think he'll start Rob Carney. Rob Carney was really good in November. Yeah. He's tried and tested in Six Nations he about loves winning. Him. So I'm not sure what Leo Cullen's going to do, but he probably has to be fair to Rob Carney as well. And he's a perfect situation, Leo, now in most positions where he can make changes. And, and the team isn't diminished. What's, what kind of a Rob Carney is he going to get on Sunday or Saturday if he starts him? The one who kicks drop goals in the halfway line. Well, the one who's, who knows now that if he has to keep this level very high, and that it keeps him on his toes as well, you know. So we'll wait and see on that one. It's a perfect time for Larmer to be developing, though, isn't it? When you've got even just Fergus McFadden to one side and you've got Ezan Asewa in front of you, there is sort of, I'm not going to say a comfort blanket because it's high stakes Champions Cup rugby, but still you look around and you're like, right, okay, there's experience to my left and right in front of me. And even in training, learning from the likes of Rob Carney is surely a huge benefit. It's, it's a hotbed right now, and Larmer couldn't be learning in a better place. Yeah, there's a lot of experience, I think, and that's, that's a really important word, experience, because because these guys have been through the mill, they've been in tough situations, they've won together, lost together. Um, so he can pick up little um, you know, bits of information off them. So he's, he's in a great position. Um, and Rob Carney has been an outstanding player for Leinster in Ireland for probably the guts of eight, nine, ten years. So he's, he's going to learn a lot from him as well. Um, he won't be kind of thrown into tr towel Rob Carney too easy and, and allowing him take his place and giving him too much info. But certainly you learn a lot from these guys around you, yeah, for sure. The one thing I was really impressed with last week was Luke McGrath, who seems to have stepped up to a different level again this year. I know at the start of the season we would have been chatting about who's the backup nine for Ireland. There's no question now it's Luke McGrath. Probably the inclusion of Kieran Marmion in the squad yesterday uh, solidifies Luke, Luke McGrath's position as number two. And some people would have been surprised that John Cooney uh, wasn't included in the squad yesterday instead of Marmion. But just on McGrath, how, how does he make that improvement? I know playing alongside Johnny Sexton, naturally you're going to get better and better with game time. Is that the sole reason for his improvement? I think so, yeah, and a, and a competitive environment, and he obviously has the natural talent, but I think if you look at someone like Conor Murray, his all-round game is outstanding, he's passing, he's running, his defence, his kicking game, can Luke McGrath kind of ha bring that same physicality? He's a, he can't because he's a different player, but his distribution has improved, his decision-making has improved, and he's a real threat with the ball around the breakdown, he's always looking for a gap and opportunity, so they're different players. But as long as Conor Murray's around, unfortunately, it's going to be very difficult unless his game starts to, to, to wane a little bit. But to have that kind of competition, and you think back, Marmion was outstanding last year for, for, for against England. Mm. Absolutely outstanding. And Joe Schmidt doesn't forget that. No. He remembers guys, even if their form is a little bit... He's in the system. So there's no guarantee yeah, that sure. Luke McGrath could, because he's playing so well... He's been out there, he's been in, the, in, in that environment and played so well, Marmion. So, but it is a great, again, good depth there. Uh, an area that wasn't so strong maybe 18 months ago. Uh, Munster, uh, after the losing bonus point in Paris, that means they just have to beat Cast Atonement on Sunday and qualification is assured. They'll do that, right? Yeah, they'll do that. I think, um, I think there's, it's, it's a special place to play in, in European days, nights. Um, so I think uh, they look back at Racing with a bit of regret and disappointment. Mm. Discipline, again, has been an issue in the last few weeks. Um, 11 penalties at the weekend. And Why does it become an issue? It's just some poor decision-making under pressure. Uh, penalties come when you're under pressure. Yeah. Um, so it's bad decision-making in the heat at the moment. Um, and it's a collective thing because they're, they're just panicking a little bit. Some of these penalties are very silly ones. Hindmost foot being offside in midfield. Um, gone off your feet at the breakdown and it's costing them because you look at the start of the game um, the other day I think it was they they, they kind of shot themselves in the foot they were under pressure and they panicked a little bit um, and then you think when Conor Murray gets a long wedge penalty this is it what a remarkable comeback performance even with some mistakes and errors throughout the game great character to come back um, the kickoffs cost them as well um, so very they were you know, what could have been an outstanding yeah. victory for him ended up being a losing bonus point. But I think um, Van Gran is only in about eight weeks and I think he's got to take control of this discipline situation and put pressure on the players. Um, so Cast will come all gung-ho on Sunday and if you allow him play and allow him get him into the game and enjoy yeah. themselves, they could be very dangerous. But I think, I actually think Munster will get a bonus point win, which will bring him to 21. 
you're then looking at other results, which is unfortunate for a home quarter final, um, because it could have been so different for him. Um, you're looking at the Toulon Scarlets game. Yeah. You probably want Toulon to uh, let Scarlets to win, but not win with a bonus point. Yeah. And then you're looking at Ulster away to Wasps. You can see the Scarlets Toulon game being 54 48, like the Easily. way they're playing across. The you know, so unfortunately they're relying possibly on other results. But look, um, I think it'd be very disappointing if they're away in a quarter final from their perspective because certainly the cast game and the wrestling game could come back to haunt them. But who knows if they get that the five points on Sunday and have a home quarter final. Happy days. In my opinion, they're in a semi final. It doesn't yeah. matter who's coming to Thomond Park. You mentioned we're eight weeks in now to the Van Grand era, and I think it's fair to say that we're starting to notice a bit more of the Van Grand stamp, despite the fact that he does need to eradicate those discipline issues. And there just seems to be more of a basic attacking plan. Like Keith Earls, I thought, has been outstanding yeah. for the last fortnight. Yeah, they've worked, they've obviously, um, and, and you've got to give Felix Jones credit for that as well, yeah. and uh, um, he wouldn't have changed a huge amount, but I think he's very diligent, we heard that before he signed, uh, about his attention to detail and um, his expansive approach to the game. He hasn't tried to take him away from their direct approach and their kicking game, which has been good, uh, but they've looked, more, they've looked dangerous, there's no doubt about it, they've looked dangerous, they've looked like creating opportunities, and I think they could have scored another couple of tries on, on, on Sunday if they were more accurate. So, um, yeah, I think he's done well. Um, like I said, the discipline is something that, and look, it's kind of like me talking about discipline and penalties, I, I'm the expert on giving away penalties, I was, but... Um, they have cost them, and I think they've spoken about that themselves. You know, if you look at some of the games that they've they've struggled in, it's it's been a factor. A quick word about the um, Ulster situation. Obviously, um, there was enough in their performance last week to suggest that they might be able to dig this out. And if they do, then it could turn around the entire team, the entire management group, the entire relationship between the players and the management. It's like, so much rides on this match. Yeah, it's huge from um, they haven't been in in Europe and. Three uh, knockout stage in three years. Um, there's a lot of pressure there. Les Kiss is, is speaking about a week after week. And I think some of the performances have been embarrassing. That first half against, against, uh, against Munster, mm. the Connacht defeat just before Christmas. And there's a lot of pressure up, up, in, in, in up north around, and probably frustration maybe that they haven't been winning trophies with the amount of money they've invested and the players they've had. Yeah. Um, this is a real chance because if you get into knockout stages in Europe it gives a huge lift to the whole organisation it's a tough task from going to Wasps uh, Wasps losing to Harlequins at the weekend helped mo um, my, did it help or I did know, it not I don't know yeah, that's it, it like, kind of puts Wasps out of it yeah but then will they be trying to bounce back or do they uh, put a B team out and go yeah, look yeah like, I think they'll, they'll probably try and bounce back um, if they're out of it completely maybe they'll make some changes so it's a great opportunity and I think this is a real kind of uh, defining moment for Les Kiss and the whole group because if they don't, if they're out of Europe again, that pressure mounts yeah. uh, to another level. So it's a great opportunity for him. Hey, hope you enjoyed that latest offering from Off the Ball. If you want to subscribe, and you should, check out just up here. All our latest stuff is just down here. Generally, knock yourself out.